Okay, the next thing we'll tackle is the cylinder. And for that, we need the technique of thirds in which to draw our circles, our ellipses. So ellipses are circles drawn in perspective. And as you saw in class, they're a little flat, but they're, they'll sit correctly in space, even though they may look a little flat to you. So we'll just take a, a little look at that before we start on our cylinder. And remember that you really absolutely, absolutely need your initial box to look like an equal-sided box, an equal-sided cube, square box, for this to work. So this is maybe the bottom of the cylinder, the bottom of the cone, and it's in perspective. So your first step and you see, I've tried very, very hard not to let myself make this too long. It's a rectangle, I will not get a circle. So that your first step is to make an X from corner to corner. Because we know that a circle will touch an equal sided box in four places. And that's going to help us. So. Once I get this in, I'll have two of those places. So we always know that a circle touches the middle on either side. Now this is crucial. If you don't take the center to your vanishing point, two, two parts of your circle will be wrong. So I have to take this center right here, back and forth, to my vanishing point. That's key. And so I know that my circle touches here, and it touches here, and it touches here. To find out the arcs, how to turn it, I have to divide each of these four diagonals into thirds. And I have to look at each one separately because they're all different lengths. So, and you just eyeball it, do your best to kind of eyeball it and you have to make a mark if you don't make a mark then you don't know whether it's right or wrong so you can't just sit and look at it you've got to make a move okay and if you're wrong you'll know it you'll be able to see it because your circle will either fill up too much of the box or not enough and then it's a matter of rounding out your circle so be conscious of the fact that you're making something round that will help so that when i make this line i'm not going to fill up i'm not going to get close to my the front line of my box i'm going to try to scoot around it because i know this is round i don't want to fill the whole box up it's easier on this side because there's more distance to go this is our foreshortened side so it's a little bit tricky but you can have a couple of goes at it with your pencil and then you'll be able to tickle it out. And then if it doesn't seem round enough, you round it out. But above all, you're trying not you're trying to leave a little bit of space here and here. Otherwise it will not look round. And then you can go back with your pen and firm up your decisions. You can also use your French curves if you're, if you're good at that sort of thing. Okay, so there we are. That's how you go about it. And usually we're just using the front part. So let's put that into practice now on our cylinder. So our first job is to make our X's. Now, the middles must line up between the bottom box and the top box. So maybe that would be the best place to start is making an X on both the top and the bottom. Now the reason that this box is more open, it has more depth than the box at the top, is because it's more below eye level than this. If you were to take a cup and hold it up to your eyes and then gradually lower it and lower it, you would see that the opening of the cup would gradually appear wider and wider, more open and more open. And that's exactly what's happening here. Okay, 
so now we can start to put our middles in. So we're getting an idea now of where our, let's check our centers first. Make sure that they're lining up. So that will be a key component here, making sure they line up. Okay. And you should keep your pencil nice and sharp. Mine's getting a little dull now, so you want to be as accurate as you can. Now this is crucial. Remember that you have to go back to your vanishing point with the center. If you don't, your whole drawing will be thrown off. Your whole ellipse will be incorrect. And now it's a matter of dividing up your diagonals into thirds. So it takes some patience and some practice to be able to eye this. And it's a guide so that once you get working on your circle, if I find it's filling up and I don't have a little gap down here, I know that I need to maybe change my decision a little bit. So remember you're thinking curves, curves, curves as you go, not boxes, but curves. I'm gonna bring it across here. Oops, and at the back I want to think curves and I don't want to fill up that any more than I've filled up the front, that space. Remember, you need that space. Okay, so there's this one. Now that was the easy one. This is a challenging one because it's shallow depth shallow depth of space so we're gonna have to be as accurate as we can the other way to do it and this is kind of nice is to just if you like what you've got on the bottom just transfer it up so i bring this up to the next to the next diagonal line It will also ensure that you get the same circle on the top as you have on the bottom, only it's a little bit distorted from the foreshortening. Okay, so I have some marks that I transferred from the bottom. And I'm gonna bring this around, but I'm thinking the same thing. I need space between here and here. So I've gotta work hard at not filling up the whole box here. And I need some space over here, which is a little easier to get. Oops, I filled too much in. So that's a little wonky. I'd have to clean that up. Now, if I could turn my paper around, it would be a lot easier. So when you're doing it, do that. Make sure you turn your paper around and make it a little easier for yourself. So I've got a little piece that escapes over the edge. So my actual line is really out here. The actual line for my cylinder is out there. And here, it goes right to the edge here. So I can go here. And then if I use the French curves for the top, I should probably take the time to do the French curves for the bottom. but. Okay, now we're going to put in our shadow. So I should have borders all around, as you know. I, and yours should be 
four shapes to a page, to your large page. I'm doing them for convenience, I'm doing it this way for my recording, but you're doing it a little different. So as I've mentioned, this is not exactly how you're doing things. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in front and to one side. That's my light source where it's hitting the surface. And now I can start to project. So it makes sense if the light is here, that all this front part is lit up. So I'm looking for where will this hit the widest part of my cylinder and it hits right there. So that's my first projection and I'm going to look for where the widest part on the other side is and it hits right there. So I'm just moving my, see so if I come down this way, I just move it until I hit the cylinder and I go back this way. Now I need a horizontal line and I know from experience that these cylinders shadows can get extremely large. So I'm looking for a straight line and this straight line represents this line. They're the same line. That one and this one. And you can see that there's a curve here. So I've got to make a curve at the back here because remember with your shadows, they echo the shape of what's casting it. So, but before I do that, I need to project the center, the center of the cylinder. So I'm gonna do that. So now, if I want to make my ellipse for that represents the top of the cylinder, on my shadow, I've got a point now that I just estimated. Yeah, I could have stopped it here, I could have stopped it there, but I, I just chose there. And we'll see how that looks once I get it going. But that's the middle, and I know I have to get back to the side before I go too far. And the same thing on the other side. There's the middle, and I have to go along on this side. So, that's our shadow. And as I mentioned, they can get a little long, these fellas. So, and if you want to use your ellipse template again, I won't make you suffer through watching me do that again. So, I should round this out. Now, where this hits, where that first projection hit the widest part of my bottom ellipse here, that's where the core dark is. And the core dark is, indicates where the form turns away from the light, just begins to turn away and the light can't get past it. So before you start hatching, go in and give yourself a much darker area here. Now we have to hatch this whole area. The whole area is shadow. Keep your lines at the same angle. You're gonna take your time. I, I don't want to waste too much of your time showing you this stuff. But, so I might just stop there and, uh, and show you that you just, you just complete it. You just keep going so that this value, we have a little bit of value out here as well. And we'll put some verticals. We haven't got any verticals down yet. And we'll put some verticals here. Remember on the box, we put some verticals down. I'm sorry, I can't get these straight. My head would get in the way of the camera. So I have to be back a little bit so my lines are not straight and they're a little frantic as I'm trying to go quickly. So again, you, you take your time, but leave your highlight. So you've got a highlight, a half tone, the lightest light on the top, and a core dark and a shadow. 
core dark and a shadow side. Okay, and then the cast shadow, it starts very dark, very, very dark, right away. Right after the object, it's very, very dark. And then it gradually gets lighter. You'll see, we can do more variations when we're working with our gray markers next week. But this will give you an idea anyway. And remember, you just keep going in different directions until you get you get it as dark as you need it to be for where it is on the drawing. So really dark to start with. And I'm just kind of gouging at this right now because I'm trying to hurry. But you're going to take your time and do it in a more careful way. And again, leave enough time to do it. It does take a little bit of time. Here's my core dark again. I want to blend it in a little bit so I'm going back to do a little more. And then of course it's always darkest a little bit underneath here. Always a little bit darker. Okay, and then you're going to put in, uh, label it that you, this is the horizon or the eye level. And you're also going to label it as the cylinder. And use your, your lettering for that.